I'm crooked. Hey, hey. All right. Welcome. Hopefully you guys can see and hear me. I see volume, so that's a good sign. Um, let me know. Welcome to today's Q&A. You guys, as always, this is an opportunity for you to ask some questions. Yes, I'm in the kitchen, a little bit different uh, atmosphere here, but um, I'm going to be cooking using the air fryer. So if you're in your truck and you want a, an easy go-to meal that makes your truck smell delicious, and of course it tastes great as well, um, here's a good one. So this is Parmesan chicken uh, with spaghetti squash, which I have to laugh because <laughs> when I cook my spaghetti squash, when I warm it up so that I can actually cut through it, um, I definitely warmed it up and you, can, you should see there's my squash. <laughs> it it uh, kind of sunk into itself, so I think that's pretty funny. Um, hey Michael, how are you? So that's what we're going to have today. We're going to have chicken parmesan spaghetti squash um, in my own little way of cooking. Um, let me know how you guys make it. We'll go from there. Now I warm it up first, um, so I pre-cook uh, just to be able to cut up the spaghetti squash. So if you want to put it into your air fryer, that's freaking easy go-to. Um, I'm going to be using, normally I use chicken breasts. Today I'm going to be using chicken strips that were frozen um, and go from there. So I will grab those so that I have them handy. They're over here in the sink. There we go. There, it disappeared on you there. Okay, so I've got my chicken, my mess, and then I've got my spaghetti squash, which is all ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, knife, cutting board, cut open my spaghetti squash so that I can lay it flat. And the reason I pre-cook it is so that I can actually cut through it. Okay. And then you'll have a nice, soft spaghetti squash to start using. Um, now, a lot of you, if you guys aren't familiar with the spaghetti squash, uh, it does look like spaghetti if it's cooked and warmed up, but you do need to take out all of the seeds. So that will be my first step. Well, it's actually my second step because I've already warmed up and cut it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out those seeds. It is hot right now. Um, I'm going to use a spoon to go ahead and pull those out and some of the, you know, the slimy stuff that's in there. So we'll take that out. <laughs> All right. So how's your guys' day? Looks like the weather is coming in across the U.S. There's lots of, there, well, there's tornado warnings down in the southeast to, um, or more around the Gulf, uh, up north into Arkansas and some areas of Tennessee that are, that are getting warnings. Of course, lots of winter weather warnings across the U.S. I noticed that. The California Donner, Donner Pass, Oregon, they are expecting um, crazy amounts of snow. And of course, there's freezing rain in there as well. So I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but it is a mess. All right, so I have dug out my seeds Unfortunately, I pulled a lot of uh, the spaghetti squash out as well, so I'm going to have to go through that and take those seeds out individually once it cools off because it is hot. Um, but in the meantime, I have my spaghetti squash, and I'm going to go pull with a fork to kind of loosen it up and make more spaghetti out of my spaghetti squash. All right, so back on the task of weather. So be well, well prepared, and not only am I asking you guys to make sure that you have your uh, winter weather gear, you know, non-perishable items, uh, cans of, of goodies, of food. If you have a pet, if you have a dog with you, make sure that you've got food for them um, as well. Extra blankets for yourself. APU, if you have problems with your APU, we do have some troubleshooting videos on here. And of course, we have 24-7 maintenance, roadside assistance available to you. All right, so now starting off, this is a pretty quick recipe, by the way. Um, starting off, you've got your spaghetti squash like this. 
once you start pulling, seriously hot, once you start pulling, you'll be able to loosen it up. It'll start looking like that. So, I mean, you can literally pull that sucker out with all of the spaghetti in it. It looks so good. I love it. Now, I, you can use butter. Um, I do like to use coconut oil and olive oil for all kinds of things because it gives a lot of flavor when you don't necessarily expect those flavors. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a spoonful of, like a big old spoonful of coconut oil and I'm gonna just kind of mix it in with the spaghetti squash. Melt it a bit and then I'll be able to put some of my spices and flavoring in there, which would mostly be oregano, um, a little bit of salt, sea salt, sea salt better for you. Um, Smell that coconut. Yeah, baby. Smells good. All right. Um, yeah, so lots of weather. Freezing rain in a lot of areas. I know I, Iowa had a little bit of uh, freezing rain this morning, about 35. So not quite freezing, but it was supposed to be getting there. Um, we were in the single digits, if even in some at some point in time. And... What else? I want some garlic too. So I'm going to go with the garlic. So salt, garlic, oregano. Putting a little bit on here and spicing her up. Mostly oregano. And then I'm going to go with my tomato sauce. I use the spaghetti squash pretty much as a bowl to stir everything up, by the way. If you're wondering what on earth I'm doing. And garlic is delicious. So I do my fair share of garlic. Now you can use fresh garlic, but in the truck it might be easier to have your powdered garlic too. But it, it does depend if you guys are prepping these meals ahead of time or if you're doing them in the truck. Okay. All right, let's stir it up. Don't ask me measurements. It's about this much. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, weather's, weather's crazy. But, you know, we do, have, we do have a minute to brag about the, those who won the driver of the month for October. I'm going to dive into that with you guys here while we're, while we're stirring. How's that? All right. So driver of the month. This is, this is what this is all about. This is one of our, our bonus programs or our recognition programs that we have here at Decker. And with driver of the month, you can only win driver of the month one time within a calendar year. However, you can be nominated multiple times. And if you're in a couple of different divisions, then you can, you know, if you started out in refrigerated and you later on were in like flatbed or something, then you could actually technically have been nominated in each division. And I'm trying to think of who that happened to a couple of years ago, last year maybe? Anyways. Obviously, we prefer you to stick with one division, but that, that has happened. Um, all right. So we have had, for ingredients so far, we have had sea salt, we have had garlic, and we have had oregano. So that's where we're starting there. We have our spaghetti squash. I use coconut oil. You can use olive oil as well. You can use all kinds of flavors and stuff, you know, to spice her up. And now I'm going to go with diced tomatoes, and I'm going to use tomato tomato. Taste. If you have marinara sauce, that works awesome as well. And then I also have Parmesan cheese, and of course, I've got my Mexican cheese as well, just to make sure that I've got extra flavoring. All right, so back to the driver of the month. Now with the driver of the month, what's pretty cool is that you get, if you're nominated, you also win a $50 gift card to Walmart, and then you also get a gift from the Decker store which Miss Steph will go ahead and send out to you. I'm struggling with my can opener. There we go. <laughs> All right. So Miss Steph will get that out to you if you are a nominee. Now, if you're a winner for the division, then you'll not only get a $100 gift card to the Decker, or excuse me, to Walmart, but you'll get a $50 gift card to the Decker store. So that actually goes up and that's awesome. All right, so I'm taking, partially, depending on how much you use. Now, I'm going to use about half of this for each side of the spaghetti squash, right? 
And then I'm going to go ahead and mix that in as well into my spaghetti squash. This is what it's looking like so far. I'm hoping you guys can see this because I can't see if you can see this. And I'm just going to mix, mix away. There we go. <laughs> Better grip once it's on my cutting board. All right. Um, so yeah, that's the, the winners get a $100 gift card plus a gift card from the Decker store, a $50 gift card to the Decker store, which by the way, we have all kinds of t-shirts and stuff. If you guys are not, if you haven't seen the online Decker store, we have updated it and it is constantly being updated because we, we're getting new shirts, t-shirts in all the time. So if you're thinking Christmas presents or, you know, gift for anybody, then you can go ahead to go to our website, which is Decker Trucking, Truck Line, Decker Truck Line dot com. And then there's a tab that says company store. You can go there. You can also just call Steph. If you guys are a current driver, we do have a payroll deduct as an option. If you're using the website, you can pay online with a credit card. You can also um, pay with a credit card there at Fort Dodge at the company store. And you can see a lot more items than are on the website if you go to the company store. Like physically go there. Plus Missoula has a couple of things that um, Fort Dodge doesn't. And I think Desmar has a few as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some of these diced tomatoes in. Don't quite put as many. I'm not putting a whole half of the container, but I am putting a little bit on there. Okay, again, stirring that in. Make sure you don't poke a hole in the bottom. Did I? Nope. Okay, good. <laughs> and I'm going to put a little bit more oregano on there. And mix that in. So yeah, you can get a lot of Christmas goodies from the Decker store if that's what you guys are looking for. Uh, we've been asked lately, and yes, it has been updated, but Steph has been super busy with getting new shirts in and some additional new items. And so as she's doing that, it is changing what's available and what's not available. So let her know, call in if you have any questions and she'll help you out, okay? All right, so now with the chicken, I am gonna sprinkle a little bit of sea salt on there. Um, if you have Himalayan sea salt, that's awesome as well. Good for your heart. All right, so I'll sprinkle that on there and then I will go ahead and then place them on or within or both my spaghetti squash. Okay. There we go. It is <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> All right. So that's gonna get me started. And then once this is gonna cook a little bit, and then I'm gonna go ahead, um, after the chicken cooks a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and put some more um, Parmesan, not more, but I'm gonna put Parmesan cheese on it, which I haven't yet done. All right. What I'll do is I'll sprinkle some of this Parmesan cheese on here um, and mix that in just a little bit as well. So I've got some, and then I will get the rest uh, once it's done cooking. So for those of you who are using an air fryer, my air fryer goes to, what is mine? Mine's a power air fryer? I don't know what the brand is, I can't see it. But um, it's gotten a lot of use out of it, I can tell you that. But I go, or it goes up to 400 degrees. I don't know if yours goes up any higher, but I'm gonna go ahead and set it for 400 degrees. And make sure that I have space to, to put it in. My air fryer drops down. If yours is one that you insert from the top, obviously it's a little bit different, but for the most part, it should be about the same. I take my other racks out so that I've got a little bit of room and I'll place my spaghetti squash oh so nicely onto the rack. All right. Um, so again, with those, about midway, you guys. Actually, I'm gonna bring this down just a hair. Yeah, okay. So 400, 
And I'm gonna do about 20 minutes to start off with, and then when I open it up, I'm gonna add some more flavoring, and then uh, with the Parmesan cheese, and then of course Mexican cheese as well. All right, 20 minutes. Boom. All right, boom, boom, boom. Got her cooking. So let's talk about the winners for the month of October. So what goes into whether or not you're a driver of the month for that particular month? It's for the month of October. So all of your miles, your scorecard, your um, safety bonus, those are all factors when it comes to driver of the month. So if you've done a great job on your scorecard, usually, honestly, usually it's those who have had a perfect score or pretty darn close to it because the competition is so high for the position. And then with the safety, it's usually those who have had a perfect score. And the reason it is, now having a perfect scorecard and having a perfect or a score of zero on your safety isn't the exact requirements, but because you're competing against some of our other professional drivers, you're obviously competing against some elite drivers who are constantly getting those perfect scores. So it is likely that you're going to need to have a perfect score, both in the safety and the scorecard, in order to qualify for that. And remember, you can qualify as a driver of the month once per year, once per calendar year, and you can qualify for a nominee multiple times throughout the year. So once your scorecard and your safety bonuses are, are um, evaluated and added up, then they go and they go to the different departments. And the top three from that overall total, well then, is it three or four? They go to the different departments and then you're voted on. So the top score doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be the winner, but at that point you're then voted on. Now if you've gone over and above and have done, you know, extra to help out or or something like that, you know, something that for additional recognition, not that you did it for additional recognition, but something that we felt needed to be recognized beyond just the attaboy or hero of the week or something like that, then that's going to be factored in as well for some of those who know it. And that's where the voting goes into effect. And then at that point, the votes are tallied and our driver of the months are chosen from the previous month. So for those in October, the scorecards and, and the safety bonuses, those are usually a week before the driver of the months are announced. And so you'll see that often. Like we paid the drive, we paid the scorecard and the safety bonus last week, and then the driver of the month was chosen during that time. Um, so yes. And again, it's a $100 gift card to Walmart and a $50 gift card to the Decker store for the winners. All right, I have answered enough of those questions, at least for the time being. It, it is time to tell you who the winners were. <laughs> uh, we have our refrigerated division that's more um, centrally located within the Midwest. Um, and that sometimes those are like home on a weekly basis. Some of them are out a little bit longer, you know, up to two weeks but most of them are about um, a more regional basis. And then we have our over the road refrigerated as well. That's gonna be another division. And when I say refrigerated, I mean refrigerated and dry van. So any box refrigerated dry van, those are all included within the same division, whether it be over the road or more regional. And then we have flatbed. We have our over the road flatbed divisions and then we have our more Midwestern, more regional flatbed division as well. And then we also have a lease purchase owner operator division and a teams division. Now keep in mind that we do have nominees for these different divisions, but there may be multiple nominees depending on the size of that division. So the larger division, the more likely we have additional nominees. Is that loud? It kind of sounds loud. Um, if you, did that say? I forgot to put it up at 400. Okay, there we go. So if we, like for our smaller division, which is more of our Midwest flybed, that's probably our smallest division. That one isn't gonna have any nominees, not likely. Well, and then we have our own rapid release purchase, which is growing fantastically, but um, it is still fewer than our company side. So we don't have any nominees on that one. So that being said, 
let's dive in. Our Midwest Refrigerated winner for the month of October for Driver of the Month is Jody Sayer. So congratulations, Jody, on a job well done. Dennis McCubbin and Eduardo Aguilera were both the nominees for the month for our refrigerated. And now our Over the Road Refrigerated nominee was David Rogers. So congratulations, David. And a huge congratulation, and I believe happy birthday, to Charleston, Charlton Watson. There you go. Charlton, happy birthday as well. And I think it was yesterday. And congratulations on the driver of the month. Now our Midwest division, like I said, this is our Midwest flatbed, which is a little bit smaller division. So fewer people in this one. And this is, the winner is Douglas Davis. So congratulations, Douglas. Our Southern flatbed, which is our over the road flatbed, Christopher Brockwell. Congratulations, Christopher. And Jeffrey Bostick is our nominee. And then for our owner operator lease purchase, our winner was Frank Holman. Congratulations, Frank. And then our winners for the team division, Justin Hook and Roger Stegner. Congrats, you guys. Job well done. Yes, indeed. You also notice that, well, you may also notice that with the, um, <laughs> my phone is vibrating. Um, you may also notice that for last week, those of you who were on the road in under a load during Thanksgiving, you are given an additional $100 for being under the load um, on Thanksgiving. That's also going to apply to those who are out during Christmas and New Year's. So that's going to apply for each, for all three of those holidays this year. We're adding a $100 bonus. And that's on top of your guaranteed pay or your mileage pay, you know, whichever one you get. That's over and above that. All right. Um, Jamaican Trucker says... How much can I make per week at Decker? Well, it does depend on where you live. So if you want to fill me in on maybe give me your zip code or your city and state, I'll be able to tell you what we have available. And if you can tell me how much experience you have, I can get even more specific and tell you the rate of pay per mile. So we do offer different positions. We have refrigerated, which is an over-the-road option or a more regional option, depending again on where you live. If you, have, if you live in, say, Iowa, which is our main terminal in Port Dodge, we have multiple options. We have OTR, coast to coast, a lot of west to midwest, and then we have a more regional that is pretty much east of Denver, and a lot of up and down the midwest, Texas, Oklahoma, as you know, down into Georgia, but uh, it depends on what you prefer for your running lanes and what you're looking for for home time, and then, of course, uh, flatbed or refrigerated. If you're looking for a flatbed, and I'm using Fort Dodge as an example again, then yes, we have Home Weekly out of Fort Dodge, and we can guarantee you uh, your rate of pay as well as your pay per mile. So in a lot of cases, your guaranteed pay is below your rate of pay per mile times the number of miles that you run. But then there are some divisions that we offer a higher guaranteed pay because we Pretty much figure that you're going to be running a lot of short miles and the rate of, of that freight is a little bit more so to keep you moving to keep you get that guaranteed pay good money we guarantee a little bit more on a weekly basis and still able to get you home on a weekly basis in some of those areas for example let's take chicago as an option if you lived within 50 mile radius of chicago and you were looking for a flatbed we can guarantee you 1700 dollars a week your rate of pay per mile and the number of miles you run could exceed that, not likely in that specific division, but it could. And if it does, you'll get the better of the two. As long as you've made the requirements for the guaranteed pay, and I'm gonna go through those here in just a second, just to make sure that you have an idea of, of overall. Um, Jamaican, a living in Tampa, I believe we still have a flatbed position out of Tampa, which would get you home about every two to three like every other weekend, I believe it's how that is. Um, I'll confirm. Actually, let me give you the telephone number to call to call our recruiting department to confirm that we have that position still available. It's 888-668-0698. So call that one and you'll be able to confirm that we do in fact have that. Uh, with three years of experience, you would be looking at, let me double check here, um, but I am pretty sure that you'd be looking at about, 
want to make sure I'm right before I say it. Yep, yep, 62 cents a mile. 10 cents of that is per diem. So 62 cents a mile is your rate of pay. Your guarantee is at least $1,000 a week gross. And again, 62 cents a mile, 10 cents of that's per diem. You get a penny raise after 90 days, and you'll get a penny raise every year on your anniversary as well. So thank you. Thanks for the details. I can be more specific once I have those. Um, let's talk about that guaranteed pay so you can have an idea of what it takes in order to get that minimum amount. Now, if you don't meet that guaranteed pay, which again, I'll go through that, those criteria. They're pretty simple criteria, but they are put into place just, to, just in case. But the criteria, if it's not met, then you'll get your cents per mile times the number of miles that you ran, which again, could be more than that guaranteed pay anyway. It's just there for the safety net. So the guaranteed pay requirements. Be available for dispatch at least five days out of the week. No load refusals. No driver service failures, so, so no late loads. No CSA violations for the week. No preventable accidents for the week. So if you had an incident or a ticket last week, that's not going to have any bearing on this week's. Okay. And then the final requirement, there's six altogether, I've named the five. The sixth requirement and final is that you have your paperwork in by Sunday at 10 p.m. If you don't have your paperwork in by 10 p.m. on Sunday, then you don't meet the minimum requirements for the guaranteed pay. Now, you'll still get paid for all the miles that you've submitted by, the t by 10 o'clock on Sunday. But if you didn't submit a load, say you were on a load Friday and Saturday and delivered it Saturday, but you never submitted the paperwork, then that is going to go on the following week. So you do want to make sure that you get your papers, paperwork submitted as soon as possible. Ideally, as soon as the load has been delivered. Um, that being said, um, with the guaranteed pay, again, you'll get the better of the two. But with your paperwork, we have a, I was going to say scanners in the truck, but actually what it is, it's a transflow geotab unit that you just be able to take a picture of your paperwork and submit it that way. So you have your cover sheet that you want to make sure that it's submitted. If you have anything that needs to be reimbursed, for instance, um, fuel additive, or washer fluid or something like that, uh, make sure that you've called the maintenance support team, got the approval for the reimbursement, put the receipt, take a picture of the receipt, and submit that along with your cover sheet, noted on your cover sheet, and your bill of lanes and your paperwork. You must have at least one page of your bills signed. Not all of them have to be signed, but at least one page and make sure you have all of your bills on there. So you've taken a picture of each item. You can then submit it using the Transflow Geotab unit, and that'll get to the payroll department while you get, you know, as gathering the paperwork and getting that all submitted, attaching it to the load that you were on. Now, if you, um, let's say you had any, any expenses, the load that you had the expenses on Will, it'll be, need to be noted on the cover sheet so that uh, the reimbursements can go like hand in hand with it so that you're being reimbursed at the same time it's being taken out. If you don't have it noted on the cover sheet or if you're sending it in at a different time, it really kind of throws things off balance for you. So keep that in mind as well. So G America says, I'm an owner operator. Well, we do pay our owner operators 72% uh, plus the fuel surcharge. So again, it's flatbed. It's 72% of the load plus the fuel surcharge. You'll get 100% in the flatbed division of the fuel surcharge. Since there isn't reefer fuel for us to cover, uh, you'll get that 100%. And um, as an owner operator, we take trucks that are 2012, so 2012 and newer. Um, they do need to be well maintained and in good working order, of course. Um, if you have any questions about it, reach out to our recruiting department. I'm going to give you that number one more time. It's 888-668-0690. Normally, we want a picture of the truck. We'll need the paperwork on the truck, such as your bill of sale, um, your, 20, your most recent 2290, um, your title. I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, but those are some of the requirements that we'll need in order to get you licensed, because base plates and permits will be, you'll be running under our authority, so we'll need to get the base plates and permits for you. Um, get that taken care of, and we'll need the bill of sale. Those items, the bill of sale, the title, 
uh, the 2298 in order to get. And of course, what your most recent or last uh, license plate number was. That's also required for the state of Iowa in order to transfer and, and get you your, your um, base plates and permits. Cool? Okay, but yes, 72% of the load plus the fuel surcharge. And I did double check what the fuel surcharge was this week. Um, it was 65 cents last week. Now, for those of you in, like looking for refrigerated with lease purchase or owner operator, that's also 72% of the load. You'll get 100% of the fuel surcharge on any dry loads, but on any refrigerated loads where the reefer unit's running, you'll get 90% uh, of the fuel surcharge because the 10% of that fuel surcharge to get to 100, that 10%, Decker pays for the reefer fuel, so they will, so we will use that 10% of the fuel surcharge to help offset our expenses, just like you're using the 90% to help offset your diesel expenses. Cool? Okay. Qualifications. One more time for the guaranteed pay, for those of you who are wondering. Oh, I should mention, J American, we don't have the guaranteed pay for the lease purchase or owner operators. Um, however, you can figure about half uh, well, not no, actually not for owner operators, you'd be a lot more than that, but for lease purchase, it's roughly about half of the gross, rev gross revenue. Um, gross revenue is usually roughly uh, 45 to 5,500 a week is normally where we're at for that. Um, I know things have kind of changed within the industry here in the last few months, um, so that, that is roughly where you're out at still though, so keep that in mind. Uh, what else was in the answer? Oh, for that guaranteed pay for as a company driver, one more time, where we, it's minimum pay in some divisions, which is $1,000 a week. Um, that $1,700 that I was talking about in Chicago, we've got $1,450 if you live in areas, uh, certain areas of Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, uh, Minneapolis. Those are areas that we do have the guaranteed pay, not Minneapolis, excuse me, Milwaukee. But those are areas that we have the guaranteed pay of $14.50 a week for the flatbed division and home weekly. But again, it all depends on where you live, on what that guaranteed pay is, um, and what that home time guarantee is. So keep that in mind. Uh, but the guaranteed pay requirements, one more time, is get your paperwork in. So important, but often overlooked. And it's easy. Easy to get it in. Let's see, number two, make sure you're available for dispatch at least five days out of the week. When it comes to flatbed, especially our over the road flatbed, you must be available Monday through Friday because we rarely, it's, you know, flatbed doesn't really deliver on Saturday and Sunday usually. You know, you might be getting home Friday night or Saturday morning, but you're usually getting home under a load because the, the uh, delivery time is usually Monday morning so you're leaving out either Sunday night or Monday morning for an early Monday morning delivery. So keep that in mind, that it must be a one, you must be working Monday through Friday in order to qualify for that guaranteed pay, especially in flatbed. Now refrigerated, there's a little bit of leeway because some of the uh, refrigerated um, customers, they'll deliver on a Friday night or Saturday morning or sometimes even the wee hours of Sunday. So it, it you know, as long as it's five days down in the week, if you're available five days out of the week, then you're okay. And sometimes it might be, you might not be available Sunday, Monday. That's okay um, because of the way that the refrigerated is versus flatbed. If you've been in the industry long enough, you get it. You totally understand. You know that's how it is. But I do want to give you that warning and that heads up anyway. Uh, so that's the second one. Be available for dispatch at least five days out of the week. Um, no load refusals. No driver service failures, so no late loads no CSA violations for the week, and no preventable accidents for the week. And of course, payroll is from Monday, or excuse me, Monday. payroll is from, yeah, um, Monday to Sunday, cutoff is at Sunday night at 10 p.m., and you're paid direct deposit on Fridays. So there you have it. Direct deposit, uh, you usually get a notification on Thursday, Unless there's a holiday in there, and then sometimes you'll get that notification on Wednesday. But direct deposit by Friday. <laughs> All right, so those are some of the details. Oh, where are we at? We've got 
We're finally cooking at 400, because somebody didn't turn it up initially. That's what happens. I go one minute left. And then we'll put some more stuff on there. Ronnie says, if someone lives five hours from Fort Dodge and is willing to drive that on a home time, what would you suggest for them? Ronnie, it depends on where you live. You want to give me your zip code? Because odds are you'd just be bringing your truck home with you on your home time. Um, now, I say that, you being in Iowa, but if you lived in Missoula, or let me rephrase that, if you lived in areas of Montana, we usually have you leave the tractor and trailer in Missoula on your home time, because that is, that is one of our terminals. It is one of the few locations that we require you to leave the tractor and trailer at the terminal, but the reason being is that's a lot of deadhead um, compared to some of our other areas where we've got more freight. Now, if you live in an area that we don't have a lot of freight, then, then in that case, you wouldn't be bringing the truck home with you on your home time, but we probably wouldn't be able to hire you either. But you want to give me your zip code, Ronnie? Let me confirm that we have something out of your area that you can bring the truck home with you. And, um, of course, we can give you more details on your pay and all of that as well. But with the, if you decided that you wanted to leave the tractor and trailer in Fort Dodge and then drive home, that leaves a lot of options open for you, whether it be home weekly or in refrigerated or flatbed, or if you're looking for something um, that's over the road. Obviously, if you're looking for something that over the road, it's going to give you a little bit more home time. We figure for every seven days you're out, it's a day and a half home time. So, okay, so we're at the spot with our Parmesan, Parmesan chicken that... And this is in our spaghetti squash for those of you who have joined us late. Um, holy smoly, that looks delicious. I'm going to put it in for another 20 minutes at 400. But I'm going to throw some more Parmesan cheese on it because I love cheese and that's just going to happen. And I'm going to put some more tomatoes over the top of that. There we go. And then I'll show you how pretty it looks. This is our spaghetti squash, so it's great. Spaghetti squash is flat out fantastic for spaghetti, by the way. Do you guys ever use that? I probably tried it for the first time, like, I don't know, 10 years ago. I was like, why, why do we even use regular noodles? This is amazing. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. I don't know if you can see it, and it's probably dripping all over everything, so keep it away from the, <laughs> the computer, right? Okay. So I'm going to go put this in for an at 400 again. Let's see if I get it right this time. At 400. There we go. And for another 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to do 15. There we go. Okay. So there we have it. Uh, you're in Illinois. Let's take a look at it. 623.14. I'm going to cheat. 623.14. Um, Ballas? Bayless? Is that right? So I have, are you looking for flatbed or did you have anything specific? Because where you live, I can get you home weekly. I've got flatbed. I guarantee you $14.50 a week in the flatbed division, whether you have a year of experience or seven years of experience, but it's $14.50 a week. Your rate of pay per mile is based off your experience. So the number of miles you run as an inexperienced driver will need to be more to go beyond the 1450 than if you're an experienced driver, if that makes sense. It made sense up here, but whether or not I said it the way, <laughs> the way I should have. So one more time, if you have, let's use an example. So say you have a year of flatbed experience, okay? Or a year of experience. Then you're starting at 60 cents a mile for a rate of pay per mile. Now you're guaranteed the 1450. So obviously um, the number of miles that you need in order to go beyond the 1450 as somebody who has a year of experience at 60 cents a mile versus somebody who has say seven years of experience at 65 cents a mile will need to be more because 65 you know 65 cents a mile being that extra five cents a mile you're going to get to that 1450 a lot quicker cool all right so three years experience there we go three years experience you're going to be looking at 62 cents a mile 10 cents of that's per diem, penny raise after 90 days, and a penny raise every year on your anniversary. Right now it caps at, at 70 cents a mile. But remember, at 14.50 a week is what you're guaranteed. Let's see. 
1450, right? What did I say, 62 cents a mile? So if you're running, I don't know, roughly 1800 miles a week, if you're running 1800 miles a week, because remember these are short runs, then you're making about $1,100 a week, but you're guaranteed $1,450 as long as you meet the minimum requirements. I don't expect you to make to run a whole lot more than 2,000 miles a week in this home, this specific home weekly, only because there are a lot of short runs. Now I can be proven wrong for sure, and you could be running more short runs, uh, but even at 2,000 miles a week, you're looking at 1,240. Uh, $1,240 a week, and so your $1,450 will be the better of the two. I'll drink out of my Christmas mug. So yeah, you can obviously, it uh, doesn't take as many miles in order to exceed that $1,450 in the, as a more experienced driver. So, But Ronnie, my point is that you can bring the truck home with you on your home time. You do not have to leave it at the terminal you know, to, to take home time. Now you can, but we don't expect you to, to do that at all. We, we're actually figuring our hiring based off of where you live and what we can get you for home time. So that's all kind of factored in. Sound good? All right. All right. I can run a month at a time without home time. So in that, knowing that you can do the fourteen fifty a week, um, for the guaranteed pay, you can do that, but you don't have to. You also have the option of running coast to coast, run, which in flatbed is more like east of Denver for the most part. We have runs out west. We just don't have a lot of runs out west. And we have a couple of guys, Donnie, for instance, who lives um, who, who live out in the west and that are in our flatbed division. And so they use those few loads that we have out west to get home. Mohammed, we actually require that you have a U.S. license for at least three years. If you have that, then we can, and you also have your Class A CDL or recent graduate, then we can help you. Yeah, nationality, diversity, that's, that doesn't matter. It's what experience and the qualifications that you have. So you have to have your Class A CDL first. And then you also have to have had a U.S. driver's license for at least three years. If you have that, then most definitely get a hold of our recruiting department because then we can help you. 888-668-0698. You do also have to have a U.S. residency, but I mean, figured that's about that right, or about right when you must have a uh, U.S. CDL. Is not it. Um, Muhammad, I'm not sure what you're asking me on that second message. Is not it, what, what is not it? Let me know and then I can answer it. <laughs> but yeah, 888-668-0698 and then we can um, help answer those questions for anybody who's interested. Because if you are wondering if you qualify, let me go through some of those qualifying questions for you. But if you're wondering and you want to talk to a recruiter directly or you want to apply online, you can go to drivedecker.com and hit the Apply Now button, which is in the upper right-hand corner. If you're wondering what qualifies you, um, I did mention that you must have a valid Class A CDL. You must have at least your United States driver's license for at least three years. Not necessarily the CDL, but a U.S. license. The Class A CDL you have to have in order to qualify for our refrigerated division and areas of our flatbed division. So it depends on where you live because our over-the-road flatbed division, we do require that you have at least six months of flatbed experience or a year of tractor trailer and then we can train you for flatbed. Um, so again, that's when you want to call the recruiter or go ahead and put your zip code in and I can tell you, yes, we can hire you and train you in flatbed or no, we need that six months or a year of tractor trailer. So that's the first part of the requirements. You must be at least 21 years of age. No major moving violations. So no following too close. No 15 over speeding tickets. No careless or reckless or erratic lane changes. Nothing like that in the last three years. No DUIs, DWIs, nothing like that. Um, if you have a minor speeding ticket or a minor ticket, 
such as a five over speaking ticket. We can work with that. Um, we can work with a couple even, as long as you don't have, a, you're not a habitual offender of speeding and have multiple speeding tickets within the last three years. Uh, we also require that you do not have a DOT recordable accent that's preventable. Now, if you were in an accent that you weren't at fault at, that's a different story. But if you were, if you had a DOT recordable preventable accident, that has to be at the least, at least three years old. Um, Muhammad, I, I have answered you. Um, you can go and listen to the replay, replay if you like. But again, the, the reason that we aren't able to help you at this moment is that you need to have a United States license for at least three years before we can hire you, and of course, a valid class ACDL. If you have that, and again, if you have that, and you live within the United States, then absolutely you can put in an application. Those are the requirements. So if, if you had something else that disqualified you, such as a major moving violation or a preventable DOT recordable accident, or uh, you know, you're on probation, like felony probation or something like that, then you would be disqualified. So then that would answer why we couldn't help you. But not knowing your work history or your um, driving record, just knowing that you don't have a Class A CDL, then that would disqualify you. So, um, yeah, I'm, I feel like I have answered you. Uh, what else? But again, if you want to call the recruiting department and ask specifically and give them your application so that they can see it and confirm whether or not we can or can't help you, then just go to drivedecker.com and fill out an application there. Okay? Okay, excellent. Um, what else can I tell you? There was one other qualifying or disqualifying factor that I was going to say and now I can't remember what it was. If you guys are on a probation, uh, you know, recent felony and, and are on probation, we cannot work with you until you're off probation for company policy. Um, being over the road and checking in with your probation officer is often difficult. So that is, and, and a lot of times they don't allow it. Now, there are some exceptions to that, but uh, yeah, if you guys have questions, again, feel free to, to reach out. Uh, what was the other qualifying factor? I'm sure I'm missing one. Anyways, um, if you have more questions or if you're wondering if you are qualified, you can reach out at 888-668-0698 or apply online at drivedecker.com. All right, you guys, I have about six minutes left for this Parmesan to be completed. We can cut open the chicken and see if it looks delicious, which I'm telling you right now, it's going to look... It looked amazing a few moments ago. I'm sure it's going to look amazing yet again. So let's hope we didn't overcook it, right? <laughs> I never do that. What are you talking about? All right. About five minutes. Um, so that is our chicken parmesan spaghetti squash recipe, which is easy to make in the air fryer, in your truck. Uh, we should get together some of these recipes, you guys, and, and put a book together so that you can access those recipes um, easy, easily and eat healthy while you're out on the road. Uh, now, there are healthier alternatives as well, but uh, like olive oil and coconut oil versus some of the butters um, or margarine. I'm not a margarine person, but... Um, so we use my a Tyson chicken and the spaghetti squash from the garden. And then, like I said, we had diced tomatoes. We had tomato paste. If you guys have marinara, that's fantastic. Use that. Then you don't have to get all of the spices. So I'm putting oregano and sea salt and garlic. Garlic's always there. Pepper is a great idea. I usually um, add that right there at the tail end. Um, and then plenty of Parmesan cheese. You don't want to be lacking. I would suggest that you go to drivedecker.com and put in your application so that we know for sure. So I can actually see what you have and that we can work with you. Work history is important too, you guys. That's something else that I should have mentioned. Maybe that's where I was going about. Anyways, work history. Um, you must have some, if you don't have driving history within the last three years, 
but are a recent graduate of a, of a school and then obtained your class A CDL, then you should be fine. Um, you should be fine and qualified. Now, that said, if you had 10 years of driving experience, but you've been off for the last year and you've been doing some other employment, uh, maybe you've been doing property management. If that's the case, I know I'm totally throwing what ifs out there, but if that's the case and you've still been working for the last year, it just hasn't been driving, you have plenty of experience previously that would qualify you for the driving position. Now, if you had a year of driving experience, but you haven't been driving for three years and you've, been, you've still been working, but you haven't driven for three years, you're going to want some sort of refresher course or training before you come aboard uh, in, or in order to qualify. So, again, specific questions, get a hold of us at 888-668-0698, and then we'll be able to, to answer your questions. All right, I am going to go ahead and open this up. Yep, it is turning off. Woo, baby! Three minutes left. Dang, that looks good. It's about lunchtime. It is about lunchtime for me. Okay, so there you have it. There is the chicken, parmesan, and tomato. And I need another vodka. I'm gonna cut her open to see how the chicken looks. Sound good? It smells delicious. I don't know if that matters, but it smells delicious, you guys. I'm not sure if, if Thomas Remington is going to approve or not. No, he does. He's our, our cook. Just kidding. Oh, baby. Man, that looks so good, you guys. Look at all the juices. There you have it. That is the chicken parmesan. You can see the steam coming off. You really don't want to... Take a bite until it's done steaming. <laughs> All right, let's put a tomato on it for even more flavoring, right? Make sure I get the, the good added. Mm. Wowzers, it's like I know what I'm doing, you guys. I like it. <laughs> All right, so there is your chicken parmesan spaghetti squash. Oh, it's so yummy. Hope you guys get a chance to make it yourself and enjoy it. Well, I am sorry, but that doesn't mean that down the road you can't. Right? Okay. All right, you guys, you have, I'm going to continue to eat this. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And I will visit with you again later this week. If you want to catch us on TikTok, we'll be live here and there on TikTok. And of course, on our Facebook group, our Facebook page, we go live Monday through Friday in the mornings to kind of do a weather update, keep everybody in the loop of what to expect. And if you guys have weather updates that you'd like to share and you're part of our Decker Facebook group, please go ahead and do that so that we are well educated on what the weather is like in the area we're running. But yeah. All right, you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Please stay safe, stay warm. The weather out there is frightful. I think I'm hilarious as I say that. I notice the irony, but it is it, scary in some places. We've got tornadoes and freezing rain areas and snow for like 49 inches that you need to be well aware of. So stay safe. Windy too, by the way. Um, stay safe, stay warm, and make sure that you continue to communicate with your driver manager so we know where you're at and we can communicate with the customer as well. All right, you guys. I will talk to you soon. Have a wonderful